Here are 16 facts to know before you buy yarn art jeans for crocheting amigurumi. Let's start with a little story. About five weeks before my daughter got married, I decided that it would be the perfect time to design two brand new amigurumi patterns, a bride and a groom. And on top of that, I chose to use a yarn that I had never even seen before. And while I love a little crochet experiment, I do not like putting that kind of pressure on myself. But I threw caution to the wind and I jumped in head first with my harebrained idea. But before we get into the nitty gritty about the yarn art jeans, I do wanna share a little bit of the inspiration for the design and why I wanted to use this yarn in the first place. The inspiration for this project was my daughter's wedding. And I wanted to make them something special and my mind went directly to amigurumi. I absolutely love crocheting toys and I thought that it would be fun to try to make amigurumi dolls that looked like them. The bride and groom patterns aren't available yet because I'm still tweaking them. I'm still messing around with it and trying to get it perfect. But the best way to know when they will be available is to sign up for my monthly newsletter. I will leave a link to it in the description box box below. I always notify my newsletter subscribers first. The groom is the first design that I started working on. He had to have super long legs because he is much taller than my daughter. I also wanted to give him a surprised expression, the way a groom looks when he sees his bride for the first time. My daughter's new husband, that word is going to take me a while to get used to saying, her husband. He's her husband. He didn't wear a bow tie, he had a necktie, but I thought this would be really cute and I added these little buttons for some detail. His hair was a bit of a challenge and I wanted it to be shaped correctly, but I'm actually pretty pleased with how it turned out. I used yarn art jeans in the colors flesh for his skin, smoked for his pants, his shoes, and his bow tie, white for his shirt and socks, and brown for his hair. I was a bit nervous when I started designing the bride because I felt like the groom turned out so good and I loved how much he looks like my new son-in-law so I felt a little nervous I wanted to get my daughter right I used the same pattern for the body I just had to shorten the legs and the torso a little bit because there really is a pretty significant height difference between the two and I wanted to represent that but I didn't want it to be super accurate because then it would look really weird with the dolls but anyway I did shorten the legs and the torso and everything was going swimmingly until I got to the hair I spent days crocheting the hair, ripping it out, starting it all over, crochet, rip, repeat. I wanted the hair to be super realistic, so I bought this Dolly Mo Wooly Mo Hair yarn. <laughs> this one is a hard word to say for me. Dolly Mo Wooly Mo Hair yarn. It is absolutely gorgeous, and I got it in several different colors because I thought this was going to be perfect and I'd want to use it for all of my amigurumi toys. And I do think it's really good. But when I made the amigurumi bride and I used this, she started to look more like the female elf Galadriel from Lord of the Rings, the early 2000s movie version. And it just wasn't working for me. I was feeling like she looked very fairy-ish and not like a bride. And so I had to take all of that out. And this is a mohair blend of 78% mohair, 19% wool, and 3% polyamide. And when you brush it out, it does look very realistic. But if you've never worked with mohair before, it can be tricky. And all of these little beautiful fibers can kind of stick together. And if you need to frog your work it can be really tricky and the thing that I do that seems to help the most is to just pick out one stitch at a time you really can't frog it like you normally would and just rip back quickly you have to do one then the other and you might even have to tease out some of those fibers because they really do want to stick together. And one of the reasons why I didn't like it, besides the fact that I thought she looked like the elf from Lord of the Rings, is because it made the hair so thick and my daughter wore it in a bun and I thought it looked so beautiful. And I really wanted it to look like that. And it was just so thick and the bun was as big as her head and it just didn't look right. So I just felt like this wasn't going to work. I ended up having to cut 
all of this mohair out, which broke my heart, but I've saved all my scraps because I'll find something to use them for later. But yeah, this did not work. So then I had to scrap everything and I was really getting down to the deadline and I knew that I wanted to make the hair look more like the groom's hair and I wanted it to be a similar style yarn. But I was out of time. I could not just order the same yarn art jeans before we had to leave for the wedding. That's when I dove into my stash and found my Premier Yarns Minikins and I got the color Butter that looked pretty similar. My daughter is blonde and I wanted it to look blonde. It doesn't look exactly, but it was gonna work. I tried so hard to make this hair look like my daughter's on her wedding day. She had it pulled back. She didn't have it in a bun like this at the top. It was more in the back and it was really beautiful. And then she had these pretty little tendrils in the front. So yes, it looks a little bit like it, but I think I'm gonna keep working on it to get it right. The next part was the dress and I envisioned a very similar style dress to my daughter's and I wanted it to be super elegant and super beautiful because my daughter's dress was the most beautiful wedding dress I've ever seen. It was lace and it was just so gorgeous. But here's the deal. Here's the reality of it. I was running out of time. <laughs> and this is when I started to panic. So the wedding was on Saturday, July 8th, and we were leaving to go up on Wednesday because a lot of our family was going to be there and we had preparations to attend to, and I had a lot to do. So I had started the dress multiple times. It was the same thing like the hair. I would crochet some, and realize it wasn't right, I would have to rip it out, start all over again. And yes, this was causing me a lot of panic. And this was the same week that we were leaving to go up to the wedding. Even by Tuesday, I was still just up here in the bodice and I was still so worried that it wasn't turning out right and I was panicking. And on Wednesday, we drove up to the mountains and I'm still working on the doll. And at this point, I'm having to decide I have to scrap these ideas of grandeur that I had and all of these beautiful beautiful, intricate stitches I wanted to use, especially for the skirt part of the dress. And I just said, you gotta get it done. It has to be done, it cannot be perfect. And what I did not anticipate was that I was going to be spending so much time with our family members and just doing all the little things that we needed to do to get ready for the wedding that I barely had time to work on the dress. In the evenings, I would crochet some, but I was so tired that I would have to put it down. I am back at the hotel. It's the night before the wedding and I'm still not done. I have a little bit left to do, actually, no, it's not a tremendous amount, but I still have a bit to do on the doll's dress. <sighs> We've been just so busy. I never thought about how busy a whole wedding was going to be, and I thought I would have time to get this done. So I'm scrambling tonight because I really need it done, and I'll show you. I'll show it to you. So here's the dress. It's still about half the length that it needs to be, so I need to start crocheting. So literally, on the day of the wedding, as my daughter was getting ready, putting on her makeup, I was crocheting. <laughs> I brought my supplies with me to the venue and I sat there and I crocheted. And I didn't talk to anybody. And if anybody tried to talk to me, I was like, put my hand up. Nope, talk to the hand because I am working. I had already done all the setup. I had done everything that I needed to do. I was dressed, my makeup was on, my hair was done. I was ready to go, but I was in total focus mode and I was crocheting like I have never crocheted in my life. And the only thing I forgot to do was to add the little tulle veil in the back. And I still haven't added it on yet, but I will. I've got this pretty little tool that I actually got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to add it so that it looks more like my daughter's because her veil came from behind her little bun. It was so beautiful. Anyway, I got it done. In the nick of time, I got it done. And we put the bride and groom dolls on a little table where there were some little decorations and a little gift box and it was just really cute and I was just glad to have them there. Thank you for letting me ramble and now let's talk about the yarn. I've heard a lot of really great things about yarn art jeans for crocheting amigurumi, but one thing that I know for sure is that yarn is a personal preference. What works for one person won't necessarily work for another and that's why I had to try it for myself. The first thing to know is that you'll find this yarn in a couple of different places if you're within the United States. 
The first is Amazon, the next is Etsy, and the third and the place that I bought it was from Hobbinus Yarns. And that's where I found the best price and it's $2.59 for a 50 gram donut. It comes in 64 different colors. It's 55% cotton and 45% acrylic. It's a number two fine weight yarn. The recommended crochet hook size is 3.5 millimeters and it's 50 grams and 160 meters or 1.75 ounces and 174 yards. Let's first talk about the pros about this yarn. One of the biggest benefits and one of the things that I like the most about this yarn are the colors. Now there are 64 different colors, but what makes this yarn unique is that they have several colors that are perfect for skin tones. For my bride and groom, I used the flesh tone, but there are also other colors that would be perfect for all different hues and shades. There's the flesh that I used, but there's also brown number 70, brown number 40, pinkish orange 73, which I also got too, and I wanna show you how they look side by side. So this one is a more peachy orange tone, and this one has a little more beige to it, so it really depends on what color you're looking for, but these are both great for flesh tones. They also have brown 71, they have beige 87, and beige 48. So there are so many different colors that you could choose from for skin colors. And in addition to all those skin colors, they also have lots of other bright and muted colors as well. And one thing that I really liked about this smoked color that I used for the groom's pants and his shoes and his bow tie is that it's not quite black and it's not quite gray. It's a bit of a heathered tone and it's really, really beautiful. I love heathered tones for yarns and this one just turned out spectacular. Another pro is the price. At $2.59 for a 50 gram donut, I think that's a pretty good deal. The next pro is stitch definition. If you're a crocheter and you love to be able to see the stitches on your amigurumi, this yarn has great stitch definition. I love that nubby textured look when you crochet amigurumi with a high stitch definition yarn and this one really does it for me. It really, really looks good. Another really good feature about this yarn is that it is not splitty at all. Hallelujah, I do not like using splitty yarns, especially especially when it comes to amigurumi. I can handle it for other projects, but when it comes to amigurumi, I really don't like there to be any splitting and this yarn is great for that. Now we have to talk about the cons. And as much as I liked this yarn, there were a couple of cons. I typically like using heavier weight yarns like worsted or DK weight for amigurumi, but this is a number two fine weight yarn and you'll hear it also as baby or sport weight. And one thing that I like to do when I am using a new yarn is to look at the recommended crochet hook size and for the yarn art jeans, it's 3.5 millimeters and then subtracting two from it to get the right crochet hook size. And for this yarn, that was a 1.5 millimeter hook and I didn't have one in my stash, so I went and bought one. And then I tried it and thought, I can't even use that hook to grasp the yarn. It didn't work at all. It was way too small. I had no idea how small a 1.5 millimeter crochet hook was, but it's tiny. So I just looked in my stash and I also tried a two millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook and they both worked great, but I settled on the two millimeter. The next con is about the fiber content itself. So this is a cotton acrylic blend. And because of that blend, I thought it was going to be fairly soft because I have some cotton yarns in my stash that are actually really, really soft soft, but this one isn't so soft. So if you're looking to make a really soft, cuddly toy, I don't know that I would recommend the Yarn Art Jeans for that because it's not a soft yarn. The next con has to do with the previous con of the yarn being a cotton acrylic blend. Because it has a majority cotton in it, 55%, I did find that it made my hands a little bit sore. And for some folks, cotton is a less stretchy yarn and it can cause some hand and wrist soreness. So if you're sensitive to that, just know that. I didn't find it as bad as a 100% cotton, but it was a little bit there, but I was still able to make both the amigurumi groom and the bride with this yarn. All in all, the pros, 
definitely outweighed the cons for me for this yarn. I love the stitch definition. I love the colors. I love the price of this yarn. There's so many things to like about it, but I did want to make you aware that there are a couple of cons there. But make sure to sign up for my email newsletter by clicking the link in the description box below. That way you'll be notified anytime I put out a pattern. I always share my latest news with my email subscribers first. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you stay safe out there and happy stitching.